Thank you, sir. Yeah, fun stuff. So, I'm Viz. I do security for Twitter. Uh, I do some talks here and there, and I tend to get really excited about stuff. So, phishing is a big deal for everyone that works in ISRT or Red, or not Red Team. But... Ah! Always with the technical difficulties. Maybe, maybe, ah, ah, okay. So, phishing is a big deal for everyone that works in the defense side of InfoSec. People who work in help desk, ever, ever had to deal with an infected workstation before? Probably phishing, maybe, right? If you Google, you'll find a list something like this over the last two to five years of companies that have been popped by phishing. It's a big deal. Uh, presumably, the, this list is longer than, than this list, because these are just the companies that reported it, right? So, I thought about it a while and I wanted to find a really cool way to describe what I wanted to do and the best thing I could come up with was antibodies. So, and if you don't know how antibodies work, this is actually really cool because I spent the day researching it to make sure that I wasn't like just blathering idiocy on stage. I wanted to make sure I had all my technical details right before I did the talk. Right? This is actually really, really cool. So, antibodies are the human body's equivalent of laser painting a target to be hit by a guided missile, essentially, right? So there are white blood cells called killer T cells, or T lymphocytes, that produce antibodies that get dispersed out into the bloodstream, right? And these antibodies land on the stuff that the body doesn't like. And then the neutrophils here on the right actually go and eat them, like literally eat them. They have digestive enzymes, they'll find stuff and eat them. That's kind of cool. So if you think about it, you start to see some similarities between the systems that we run at work and the human body, right? So uh, it could be argued that AV, right, is, is the neutrophils because it goes and fetches bad cells and eats them. So presumably anything that gets rid of stuff that's bad fits into this category. So in this example, on the left we have a killer T cell and the way that these things work is they spray, they spray the bad cell with toxins, quote unquote. Uh, it causes the cell wall to deteriorate and the cell dies. Okay, that's cool. So the, tr the trick with these T cells though is that this killer T cell is specifically programmed to attack one specific thing, right? So presumably this is an equivalent to like malware uh, signatures. So if you don't have a signature, this stuff's gonna get by it, right? So white blood cells are essentially the predator. They, they laser mark stuff for other things to get destroyed. And the neutrophils are like your sweeper teams that come in and do the destroying. This all probably is not surprising or new to anybody in the room. But uh, the neutrophils could be anything from like security conscious employees to antivirus or IDS or IPS, malware signatures, anything that essentially makes the bad stuff go away. So how do you actually produce a system like this in an organization? How do you do that? Like besides just having you know, an email address that people send, oh God, I got it infected, or you know, have you have AV signatures that do reporting once a day or something like that, what do you do? Uh, so in the human body, you actually have right now thousands or tens of thousands of different T lymphocytes floating around in your bloodstream that are specifically programmed to attack one specific thing, like malware signatures, right? Like if you go download Snort, it comes with a bunch of default stuff. That's exactly, the, the, the mechanism is the same, the same thing. So, how do you do that in a company? Like, how do you build an immune system? Well, you use vaccines, just like you do in the human body. You inject the system with a weak variant of the virus that you intend to focus on so that the body can learn how to deal with it. Uh, from time to time, you might need a booster shot. This is not uncommon stuff. If you're traveling to a place that has malaria, then you get a malaria booster shot before you go, and then you don't get sick. So the idea of boosting companies' immune systems is very simple. The intention is for people to know not to click on shit, essentially. Uh, if they don't know, and they can ask their neighbors, and their neighbors presumably will be killer T cells, uh, the neighbors will help them out, and they will know not to click. Uh, at some point, this system will have enough momentum to be self, uh, self-sustaining. Uh, it won't need booster shots anymore. Uh, it's a fairly tall order, but in the time that we've been doing this program, uh, we've gone from dealing with clicks and dealing with uh, remediation to dealing with a gigantic mass of inbound emails, uh, some of which are complete, most of which are completely legitimate at this point, uh, of concerned employees that something is suspicious and they want the information security team to investigate, right? 
So if that's a good sign, it means that the system that we built is working. So how do we become immune to phishing? Well, it, we have to vaccinate. That's the only way. So how do you vaccinate against phishing? This seems kind of weird, right? Well, you vaccinate against phishing just like you vaccinate, vaccinate against everything else. You, you get people sick for a while. You fish them. You fish them a lot. Um, employees will eventually become white blood cells, right? Uh, they will mark things for destruction, just like killer T cells do and, and uh, white blood cells that produce antibodies. Everything bad they will mark becomes a new learned antigen uh, and will help the system uh, develop an immunity to that antigen. If you do this over and over again, you develop a strong, strong immune system and the system will rarely get sick, right? But what's the point, right? People are still gonna click. You're still gonna have that one new guy that's three days old that's still gonna click on stuff. True, but when you buy body armor, it protects your body, but now your arms, your legs, or your head, and body armor still works, right? When you get saved by your airbag, you go to the hospital with a broken nose and a screwed up neck, but you're still alive, right? And when you get vaccinated, you get sick for a little while, but then you're healthier than you were before. So presumably, this is nothing new. We treat it the same way, we should have roughly the same results. You have to start somewhere, and something is better than nothing. So, let's say I've convinced you guys to at least hear me out. What next? So, it's pretty straightforward. The context of phishing, in the context of phishing, the symptoms of are infected machines and sensitive data leaving your network. Uh, the root cause is people clicking on things that they shouldn't click. Because they don't know better or because they aren't paying attention. So treating the root cause is getting the people to be able to recognize phishing. Like why is it the people in the room can recognize phishing but not like the new marketing intern, right? What's the difference? So we've already proven that having an awareness program doesn't really help. It checks some compliance boxes, but it doesn't fix the problem. People still click, people still get infected, you still have an incident response team, you still have to deal with infections. We have to go beyond awareness. We have to have an interactive program. So how do you do that? So you have to decide what to measure, and this is where it gets a little tricky because it's custom to every new, to every new environment that you're going to do this in, right? Every company is going to be a little bit different. So you have to identify where your organization gets hit the hardest uh, with phishing. So you have to have people report that to you. See what pretexts the bad guys are using against your organization. Uh, and you have to use this to decide what to measure. And maybe it's attachments, maybe it's clicking links, Maybe it's responding to really strange email addresses and having a conversation like 419 scams. Your mileage may vary. It's something you'll have to investigate. So we chose clicks over time and data entry. How do you measure that? It's weird. Well, fortunately, there's a lot of really cool open source tools that exist that allow you to do this sort of stuff for little to no buy-in, basically. Um, I can't get into it because I don't have time, but see me afterwards for, for drinks and I'll, I'll share some goodies with you. Um, essentially, the short version is you have to fish. You have to spear fish, and you have to do it a lot. You have to actively target your employees, and you have to fish them over and over and over again. Um, you have to come up with repeatable campaigns that are uniform, because without uniformity, you can't do any measurements. So we spear fish every single new employee. Every single new employee that comes to Twitter, I fish. So to measure this over time, we came up with pretexts and set them up in order of difficulty. So the first one is pretty easy to discern as fishing. The second one, not much harder, but the pretext is so enticing, people tend to click and not pay attention to what they're clicking on. And the third one is just ridiculously evil. It's like red team evil, we're going for the throw. Like, we want, we want to install mal malware, we want to get them to click on things. We, this is like full on live fire by the third and fourth rounds. So by the third and fourth rounds, presumably you have the same employees that are getting fished over and over again. At some point you'd think they'd learn, and we can measure all of this stuff. So we can see who clicked on what things, who entered data for what things, and we can augment and tweak the, the, the program as it moves. So every campaign, essentially, is another booster shot. With every new campaign, the new employees learn, here's another way the bad guys can get at me. So presumably, we're essentially building the beginnings of a security culture and the beginnings of uh, uh, an immune system. So this is absolutely not awareness training. We're actively phishing users. We are responding to them. We are uh, tracking the progress. It's not just send a bunch of fishes out, see who clicks, measure it, and then check the box. We have a feedback loop. We created an internal mailing list that I curate where if people think something is fishy, they send the email to the emailing list or if they're getting phone calls or anything else. 
and it warrants investigation by the IT team, or the spe uh, specifically the information security team. So if something fishy comes in, whether a phone call or whatever, it gets sent to, to InfoSec, and InfoSec puts on their helmets and does a full-blown investigation. So without that feedback loop, you can't really build immunity because you can't measure what's, what the system is missing. You can't, if you're training the employees to become aware of phishing, how do you know how good they're doing without this feedback loop, right? So step one, you need to come up with a number of rounds, right? So more than one, five or six might, do, might be too many. It depends on how serious you are, but the more rounds you choose, the more work there's going to be in terms of creativity. You're gonna to have to come up with five or six or seven different weird scenarios uh, for phishing. And uh, you know, the more creative you have to be, the more work it is, the more pretext and scenarios you're gonna to have to deal with. Uh, you can do it with two if you really want, but three to five, I, I would expect, would give you the better results. Your, vi your, mi your, mi oh, sorry. your mileage will vary. For each round you come up with, um, you're going to need the pre these pretexts, uh, email scenarios that your business tends to deal with. Uh, they should all be custom built around the specific security posture of your organization. Um, you'll need to stru the, structure these around the threat landscape that you deal with, uh, which means some homework. You're going to have to do a little bit of threat intelligence. You'll want to mimic live attacks as closely as possible or as closely as your legal team will let you. Uh, if you constantly get Viagra spam, then you need to build a Viagra spam pretext. Uh, this program needs to be as custom tailored as you can possibly make it. And like I said earlier, don't give your system a vaccine against smallpox when you're going to a place where malaria runs rampant. It's not going to help. So step three, metrics. Measurements are how you will determine if what you're doing is actually working. Uh, to do this, you'll need to do the same thing over and over again for a long period of time and see if there's any changes in the results. We chose new employees. You don't have to. You can choose everyone in the organization. You can choose just a department. It's up to you. Uh, but we chose new employees because we figured that they would filter into the system and that they would be very chatty and they would go make friends and they would sort of spread by whoever was in earshot. So for anybody that's read Snow Crash, very similar to the Ashe Ra virus, uh, a neuro neuro-linguistic virus that will be carried by people and spread everywhere that's within earshot. It seems to work, surprisingly. Uh, so step four, the reveal. For each of your pretexts, you'll need to design an email and a landing page so that people have something tact tactile to deal with. Uh, people will click the links in emails and they'll get to the landing pages. Then if you choose, you can have them sent to a gotcha page or training page that says, ha ha, you've just got caught or you've, been, uh, you've just been put through a phishing email campaign. Uh, and give them some corporate information to click on. Here's their training page you can go look on. Here's more information, talk to InfoSec, whatever. Uh, you can serve them malware if you want. You can ask for credentials. You can pop Java applets. It doesn't matter, whatever you want, basically. You just need to come up with a thing and make sure it's uniform. So stick to your guns. You want uniform, repetitive motions. So if you measure two data points, uh, the click and then the subsequent interaction, you measure these over time for the same employees, you get an idea of if they're doing better or worse, right? You can graph over time. So now this is where you adjust the trim based on your step four results. You adjust the verbiage, the pretexts, the landing pages just slightly to make sure things work better. Fix typos, interview employees about the program, ask them why they click, why they didn't click. Don't let on that you're using this feedback to help better the program. You ask them, what did you think about this email? Why did you click it or why did you not click it? If we could have done this better, like how, how could we have done it? Just social, essentially social engineer them. Um, the language was off, so it seemed fishy and that's why I reported it. Or it seemed so enticing I didn't even think to click. Use that feedback to better the program. You'll start to see repeat offenders. So you'll need to reach out to the repeat offenders to touch them personally. And you'll need to test them again. If they improve, it's just more proof that the system works. So we use training pages. At the end of the phishing campaigns, uh, we use training pages to tell employees that they fell for it, basically, to, to give them in immediate feedback. Hey, you fell for a phishing campaign. This is what you should do better next time. We include screenshots and pointers to say, here's a clue, here's another clue, here's a breadcrumb, here's how you can look at the stuff. You should do this on other emails that you get, and it'll train you how to deal with these phishing campaigns. You have to design these training pages so that essentially anybody can learn from them. Um, you need to write in clear English and don't use any technical jargon. Uh, you need to give, don't give the re reader too much to digest. You need to be concise and be somewhat lighthearted uh, since it's just internal testing, but don't be so lighthearted that people don't take you seriously. Being friendly helps people remember, but being too friendly 
helps people easily forget. So it's beginning to take shape. At this point, if you have a feedback loop and training pages and a regimented cadence, you should start seeing bits of information come to the service that you didn't know before. Maybe certain offices are worse than others, maybe demographics of people, maybe it's age, maybe it's department, maybe it's a recruitment mechanism. Uh, it could have, end up being anything. It's really a mixed bag. Uh, maybe it's nothing. Maybe everything's completely equal. But once you have the system in place, you can tell in a very short period of time who the folks are that need more training uh, and more attention. And if you made it this far, you've basically conducted a social vulnerability assessment and identified points of entry and attack surface. Now you have to go talk to these people and remediate the vulnerabilities, as it were. So this should be you know, nothing new to the, to the InfoSec t types in the room. Uh, with your feedback loop, you should start being, seeing people s uh, reporting suspicious things. Uh, emails, phone calls, anything that warrants investigation of any kind. Uh, you'll need to reply to these. The people that report stuff uh, will stop if, just, if they just blindly lob an, email, uh, lob an email and never get any response back. So you have to kind of act like a doctor. You have to give them personal attention. This feedback is for, for them and it will further encourage future interactions. These people will feel comfortable with you and then encourage the people around them to also report suspicious stuff because their experience doing it was so fruitful and pleasant. So these interactions will be talked about, mentioned in passing, it'll become a perpetually persistent vibe and a security culture will begin to form. And for this to be successful, you don't need to indoctrinate every single employee. You just need to indoctrinate a critical mass and then the momentum will, momentum will carry it the rest of the way. At that point, you've basically won. Recently, we were notified that some of the developers at Twitter in our office had begun crafting Chrome plugins to help detect our phishes. Like, they're writing code to stop us now. I'm like, yes! It's cool, like, I have an opponent now. Um, so right, right now, we're calling that a natural occurring antibody. So we've actually turned employees into these killer T cells. This is pretty amazing. So now basically what we need is human trials, right? We have a vaccine, we think it works, it works at Twitter, now we wanna see if anybody else is interested in trying, right? So we've seen it grow from an idea and some tinkering to a full-grown security program that's been adopted company-wide. Uh, we've seen marked improvements in employee interactions with malware over time as well as the signs of natural defenses forming. So we're going to continue to develop this program further, incentivizing people to become more security aware with swag, maybe challenge coins, more physical, positive feedback, prizes, and things like that. Uh, we're also developing a traffic school for uh, people to go to if they're repeat offenders to help train them and remediate, remediate vulnerabilities, right? So if this vaccine works, we'd like to move on to human trials. We're giving you the information that we've discovered to begin your own programs. So uh, imagine never ever having to do incident response for phishing ever again. Cool idea, right? I mean, it's a tall order, but it's a cool idea. And that's the prize at the end of the rope. And thank you very much for letting me come and rant at you. <laughs>